So what's the purpose of a karyotype? And why do we need to know about it? And during this video, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, let's, we'll define it. I'm adjusting the video so I can um, show different parts. And this is brought to you, of course, by Curious Moran Land, where science literacy will make America great. So let's look at this. This is a karyotype. And this is your basic definition, arranging the uh, homologous pairs from largest to smallest, excluding excluding the sex chromosomes. So let's take a look. Is this a male or a female? Here's the sex chromosome. Here's the sex chromosome. So it's got two X's. You'll notice 1 through 22, they have no bearing on your sex. It's the sex chromosomes. So let's look at the next one here. By the way, that was a female. There's two X. Double Xers. Females are double Xers. Males are single Xers. They've got an X and a Y. So let's look at this. Basic definition. And pause the video at any point. And I'll try and speak more clearly. You'll notice 1 through 22, if we're talking about a human, are called autosomes. And then the sex chromosomes are pair 23. Some will label it 23, some will just call it, um, just call them the X and Y chromosome. So what's the big deal? You need to understand non-disjunction. And I'm going to just pause the, pause the video so you can see it better. Um, some of the video has been cutting off the tarp, so I'm going to take it out of um, PowerPoint mode so you can see the full text and we'll come back to it. So what exactly does it mean to say non-disjunction? The homologous chromosomes fail to separate. They fail to separate. So they fail to separate. So if these are homologous chromosomes, this is a pair, meiosis 1, anaphase 1 if you want to be technical, will separate them. So now I've got a cell over here and a cell over here. So it's like this. Each one of these cells should have an equal number of, uh, should equally distribute the chromosomes. Because the purpose of meiosis is to create sex cells that reduce the chromosome number by half. Well, meiosis, when it doesn't do that, when these two chromosomes, say, go over here, that means these cells are going to have one of each chromosome and an extra. The cell over here is going to be having one of each chromosome but be missing one. They create some unique patterns. So let's look and see how we can recognize some patterns and talk about the results. So I'm going to go back to here. So if you look here, just take a moment and look at the slide. Try obviously means three. So and monosomy. So you're, you're going to see both examples. So when the egg forms, um, or the sperm, this could happen with a sperm cell. Over here on the right, it's supposed to, the haploids, they're cells that you see. The the reproductive cells are supposed to be the haploid, 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 haploid. These four cells should been should have been one n, but this one's two n. That means for one of those chromosomes, it has an extra. This can cause devastating problems, and we'll see that shortly. So if the egg has an extra chromosome, the sperm cell is haploid like it's supposed to, fuse them together, and there for all the chromosomes, there's two of each, but then the one that did not separate, the non-disjunction, ends up resulting in this thing called trisomy. The converse of that is, let's say this empty one ends up becoming the future egg. So it's missing a chromosome, and they only have one of each uh, type, or they're missing a type. All right. Notice it says zygote. See, the zygote is supposed to have two of each type of homologous chromosome. The trisomy and the monosomy. The zygote has three when it's supposed to have one, uh, two. The monosomy, the zygote, has one where it's supposed to have two to be diploid. So let's just uh, run down and look through some examples. Take a moment, pause this, and part of the video might get cut off. So what I'm going to do is just... Um, show you the before and after. 
Actually, I think it will work, so let's try this. So you notice I circled something. Down here, chromosome number, pair number 21, there's three chromosomes. So what type of non-disjunction is it, and what is the disorder? If you said trisomy 21, meaning it's got three chromosomes in the 21st spot where it's supposed to have two. Notice I've labeled it an autosomal disorder. The name of this one is Down syndrome. This is probably the most widely known one. There's some others that I'm going to show you. What type of dis non disjunction is this? Watch the circle. Now we've got an extra X, so XXY. This is called Kleinfelder's. It's referred to as a trisomy of the X chromosome, and it's called Kleinfelder's syndrome. All right. Now I've just showed you two examples of trisomy. Well, let's look at an example of monosomy. Looks like normal karyotypes, normal, normal. You're looking through, you're looking at 1 through 22, the autosomes. You don't see anything, and then, oops, here we go. Instead of being XX or XY, it's mixing an X. Oh, I'm sorry, it's missing a Y. And that results in a non-disjunction, and it's called monosomy of the X chromosome. I'm going to just take it out of view so you can see the full thing, because I know my video has been cutting off part of the PowerPoint. So it's a sex chromosome, and it's referred to as Turner's syndrome. One little tidbit about Turner's syndrome. And the, usually during class, I usually have students stop and copy this note down. You'll see the X plus an empty sperm cell. So may, this time, maybe the non-disjunction happened in the sperm cell. It could have happened in the Y. Uh, it could have happened with the uh, sperm cell, or it could have been the female didn't send an X and the and the and the uh, father a Y chromosome I'm sorry a X chromosome came and with the male producing it so there's more than one possibility or more than one explanation for this so let's do one more I'm going to show you some other ones um, hmm. the autosomes look fine here we go what's going on here see that. That is a trisomy, back to trisomy, of the Y chromosome, and it's Jacob's syndrome. So what I want to show you now, before I do that, these are probably the most widely known ones, but there are some other ones that um, are unique. So first off, if you're one of my students and you want to see this PowerPoint again, go to Course Materials on Blackboard. Obviously, go to the quarter that we're in, click the meiosis, genetics, and heredity file. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says, I'm scrolling, karyotype activity. Right here is the PowerPoint that you just looked at. Uh, down here where it says genetic disorders, this one right here is a 37 slide long PowerPoint, and it goes into a great detail about other types of non-disjunctions. One of them would be this, Patau's syndrome. All right, when you have a trisomy of the third chromosome. Notice it says trisomy non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is when the homologous chromosomes don't separate. The result is this trisomy. And we always identify where the location from what the karyotype reveals. Another one is trisomy of the 18th chromosome. That's called, called uh, Edwards syndrome. Just to make sure the whole text is in there, I'm going to be bringing it in and out. So these are things where you have a whole extra chromosome, and they usually cause some type of issue. I'm not going to go into the results of them today in this video, but um, the handout, the video that I referred to here, this non- uh, non-disjunction disorders, it goes into the statistics, the percentage of the population that has it, and the symptoms. There's a lot of these ones where the child does not live that long, and there are very, very graphic pictures, so I'm not going to show that in this video, but if you, are, you I will show them in class, but I'm not going to show them on the video. And just a reminder, not only do we have non-disjunction, but sometimes a piece, like Kritichu, Kritichu, I'm saying it wrong. It's a French saying. This, in this case, they're missing part of the uh, a segment of the chromosome is deleted. So, all right. So that's pretty much going to be our video. And.
The whole purpose was to look at karyotypes and see how they can be helpful to diagnose gen possible genetic disorders. Brought to you by Curious Moranland, and thanks for watching.